Hey guys, welcome back. It's Brother in Christ Weston. Thanks for joining me today. So today's article comes out of the Blaze News. Let's get into it. Okay guys, um, what is it? A, a quick shout out to people who want to see the Trinity vi videos. I am going to make uh, as many as the Lord would like me to and discuss scripture, context, historical context, kind of arguments, all that stuff. I made a post, a community post on YouTube so you guys could check that out. Just to let you know what's going on. But today, um, this video that I'm doing is very, very important and I'm going to tell you why once I introduce it to you. So um, it says here, World Economic Forum unveils new digital, um, where's my, the thing that goes in your wallet, a men's wallet, and they would ask you for it and you would show them to you, she would show them to you, but then you would show it to them, <laughs> plan, and it's terrifying. Nothing is beyond the realm of possibilities. So um, let's read the article. I'm going to give you some uh, context as to why this is important and if this is how this pertains to end times and why I've been, this is like the main point of my whole channel ever since 2020 when I picked it back up. Um, the World Economic Forum recently published a new 46 page report detailing its Orwellian plan to control pretty much everything in your life. The report called Advancing Digital Agency, The Power of Data Intermediaries. Um, and uh, I'm gonna move my son over here. Sweet boy, sleeping, taking a nap. Um, describes a digital ID system, I can say that, uh, that would collect personal data about your online behavior, purchase history, network usage, medical history, uh, travel history, energy uses, health stats, and more. This data would then be used to determine who could open bank accounts. Who, who is, who's told you that? Who, who's told you that? Conduct financial transactions, access insurance, healthcare treatment, book trips, cross borders, and more. On the Glenn Beck radio program, Glenn breaks down the dirty details of the ID system and warns listeners to stop believing that terrifying proposals like this are beyond the realm of possibility. Yep, I'm not trying to boast or gloat about anything. What I'm telling you is it's 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 only been confirming and reaffirming what I have been talking about and just these, these inklings in my spirit that the Holy Spirit has given me to say, this is what could happen and this is what could happen as I continue to study scripture and just ask questions to the Lord. Um, and when I get these kind of, not like a, I don't like to say downloads, like, oh, you got a download. Like, you know, I'm, I'm always, um, I'm, I don't know. God doesn't show favoritism. So you can hear the Lord as much as I can. Um, and what is it? Uh, uh, but just paying attention to scripture and asking the Lord for answers and questions about how certain parts of scripture come about when we don't have the details and kind of just theorizing there and putting pieces to the puzzle together. Even if I don't have a certain piece, but I have the pieces afterwards, I can kind of like gauge, right? Um, so, uh, Glenn says, look at what happened in the last few months. Uh, nothing is beyond the realm of possibility. And then it says, watch here. So I have not watched that. Now, this is why I want to discuss this. The point of my channel has been to lead people to Christ first and foremost, and to talk about Revelation 13, to talk about when you get to Revelation 13, the rapture is taking place. So talking about getting saved, salvation, um, what's it mean to be saved? the rapture, when people get left behind, right? Um, when things happen, when we're gone, and there's a society on here that either is um, believing in aliens, worshiping the Antichrist, and completely deceived, um, and not taking the mark of the beast. Why? Because it pertains to salvation, meaning that you can no longer be saved the moment you take it. Um, I have said that because I have mentioned in so many videos this very same concept about becoming a second-rate citizen because of this guy. Remember I talked about this and you wouldn't get the best cars, you wouldn't be able to open a bank account, you maybe wouldn't be able to get subscriptions, certain services, travel, jobs. It's it literally just take anything and everything of the service industry, anything and everything that you like and or do and or pay for and then put somebody else in front of you and then put some more people in front of you and more people in front of you because they're obedient, they comply, they're not a distraction. They're, they're governed by their, their whoever, their authoritarian oligarch antichrist. Um, and what is it? Uh, uh, they're falling in line and being brainwashed and, and warped literally into, into submission to the antichrist when he shows up. Um, it's been the whole point of my channel because I've been trying to realize how people get to a Revelation 13 society where the hearts, outside of just the simple understanding of a Romans 1 society, where the wickedness of hearts just continue to grow and the Lord removes his hand. He says he removes it three times and every time he removes his hand of grace, it gets worse and worse and, and really bad. Um, and so uh, I saw this and I thought to myself, man, what a time, what a time to introduce it. What a time. Well, all the things we're going through right now with 
um, the economy where it's at with Ukraine and Russia, with the, the, the nuclear tensions, with the military tensions, with um, uh, the economy looking to crash, with the, digit, with the dollar just not being secure as much as it is anymore and, um, and possibly falling and breaking and, and just crashing, right? And needing another kind of sustainability, something to, to come in and save the day, right? Talked about digital currencies, cryptocurrencies. Um, my son may have woken up, I'm not sure, so I'm gonna continue this. Um, but uh, I talk about that because it all cascades into this new world order, this one world religion, one world government, one world currency, one world ruler. Biblical. This is the biblical account of these things that we have talked about. And it's only biblical. Nobody else made this up. You didn't get this from some spirit, some new age spirit, some some movie, some fanatic. No, it's biblical. Comes from the Bible. It's simple. And so, but the, the thought process is how do you get there where people are actually wanting to worship and give their lives, take the mark of the beast and worship the Antichrist? Even if you had somebody like me, who says, don't do this, don't do this, or you'll lose your salvation. And all these things are happening. All these supernatural things are happening, right? How could you still be fooled? So let's look at the um, the report I have here, uh, next, next uh, tab here, and it is from the World Economic Forum. Now, this is a 46-page report, and I have not skimmed it all. I wanted to find... Um, a certain piece when I looked in the uh, in the introduction of the breakouts uh, of whatever whatever chapter was talking about in the subchapters, and this is what I want to talk about with you. So look, it says here, moving towards this is page twenty. It says moving towards trusted digital agency. Now you can see on here somebody's walking, who's digital. This kind of takes into play of the metaverse stuff like that. Digital agents may negotiate access to data above and beyond simple binary gated function okay um this talks about the you know that we've i've talked about this the patent that was established in 2020 that was 2020 no excuse me 02020 and it was a patent of a a device that was like bluetooth that went into the body and as the body warmed up and it moved or whatnot it would generate a currency and it would move out and i was like this has mark of the beast written all over it then we have the quantum dot tattoo kind of thing, right? And distributing certain things into the body, right? The things that were going through, you know, these things, but a, a something that would go over the body and it had Lucifer race, like Lucifer race, or it's Lucifer ace, A-S-E, and it's, it's from fireflies, it's what glows. And it would go into the skin and you would have a light and they called this light that went over it, they called it the light bringer and it would shine over it and it could read what was going on, like certain details about things that you've had. Um, so all that to be encompassed into a digital ID, right? <clears throat> so let's read, it says here, the role of digital ID identity in supporting human agency. You are the intermediary, you are the agency that is inhabiting this watch says, can the use of data intermediaries establish a notion of sort of a digital self-determination by helping people navigate technologies and data ecosystem models without losing sight of what it means to be human? <laughs> In the terms of agency expectations, our digital identities may hold the key to allowing us to determine how we can start to navigate the data ecosystem around us in a more sophisticated manner. This sounds already off the top, right? <clears throat> already sounds like the days of Noah. Sounds like a corruption of the body, right? <clears throat> when so terrestrial beings came to, uh, excuse me, celestial beings, angels came to terrestrial beings, women saw the daughters of men and they thought they were fair and they came together, had a union and they bore to them giants or the ancient men of renown, the ancient men of old, right? And this is the reason why the Lord sent the flood. Um, and then we saw them even after the flood, the Rephaim, um, and David's time, right? Uh, David and Goliath, uh, when Joshua and uh, when Joshua was rolling with Moses, and him and Joshua and Caleb went to the to the land of Canaan, and they saw these mighty uh, rooms and beds and, and chairs and things like that, and they said, when they looked at us, we looked like they were we were grasshoppers in their sight. So, here we go. A digital identity ID is an electronic equivalent of an individual's identity card. 
It is a way to provide verified personal, personally, verified personally identify, identifying information, that doesn't make sense, of an individual for, for a software to read and process. Both online and offline environments can adopt digital identity and can also act as a key by storing, deploying permissions. Carefully designed and properly managed, digital ID can also enhance privacy protections and reduce the, the rise of identity fraud, of course, because it's in you. It is you. Um, each time, only minimum information is needed for authentication, of course, for the specific purpose. Uh, some of the biometric-based digital ID systems have been adopted in financial transactions and for cash-free shopping experiences. Come on, man. I This is literally all the videos I've made, all the things I've talked about. Here we are. Uh, and I'm not crazy. I'm reading by I'm reading Bible prophecy. It's my news. It's my new source. It's where I get all my information from, right? Um, it says there's such authentication authorization processes can be completed in real time free of hassle, right? Because you are the authentication. You It's like you have like a, 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 a Google Glass or like a... Um, you know, like your eyes, like your part cyborg, right? And then like your eyes are, are cy cybernetic, right? You have something that goes into it and then they just display something and you can just go, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, okay, we're good. And then, it, you know, you're the one that has to do it. Somebody logs into an account from somewhere far away, Google pops up across your eyes and you just see it and it's like, hey, where, was it she? Well, no, because I'm right here. I didn't log in anything, but I'll log into my Google, okay, here. It's like, it is literally um, a minority report. You're just in real time. And you're just going like this. You're like, nope, that wasn't me. Okay, you have an air keyboard, you know, and I can do it right now. I don't even need a keyboard to touch to know that, you know, how to type my name. I can literally do it. I do I do cybersecurity for a living. So I, it just makes so much sense. It says here, good digital identity have five key components as defined by multi-stakeholder group curated by the World Economic Forum. Useful, inclusive, secure, offer choices, fit for purpose. Um, figure two shows the importance of identity in everyday lives. Check this out. So... Here's the importance of identity in everyday lives. This is how they have it sectioned out, right? There's healthcare. <laughs> Here we go. Healthcare. Um, for insurance treatment to monitor health devices, wearables for care providers to demonstrate their qualifications, financial services to open up bank accounts, carry out online financial transactions, food and sustainability for farmers and consumers to verify provenance of produce to enhance value and traceability in supply chains, travel and mobility to book trips to go through border control between countries and regions, humanitarian response, that's number five, to access services, to demonstrate qualifications to work in a foreign country, e-commerce, to shop, conduct business transactions, and secure payments, social platforms, for social interactions to access third-party services that rely on social media logins, e-governments, you know, this is where we become centralized because the government is involved. When they're not involved, it's decentralized and they can't make money off of that. But when you can put it in a one world government, it makes total sense. And when you can do it with somebody's identity, sorry, I worked out. So my hands are, are my, my calluses, I rubbed them down. So my hands are like a disaster and that's fine. Um, uh, but it says here, government for citizens, access, use services, file taxes, vote, collect, to vote and to collect benefits. Um, telecommunications for users to own and use devices for service providers to monitor devices and data on the network. So you know what? Hey, you didn't make a right choice today. I'm going to cut you off. Can't call nobody. You're stranded. Nope. You know what? You didn't take the mark of the beast. Nope. You can't make an emergency call. Oh, you know, you're banned from all these options. Here is a burner phone or here is this really poor, crappy, only local to like five streets telecommunications provider. And that's it. Um, and then telecommunications, again, making up number 10, monitor devices and censoring transmitting data such as energy, usage, air quality, and traffic congestion. So healthcare, financial services, food sustainability, travel and mobility, humanitarian response, e-commerce, social platform, e-government, telecommunications twice. That is your digital identity. And it is made up of entities, peoples, devices, and things. You're the entity, you're the people, you're the device, and you're the thing. This is the thumbnail. I'm just going to be like this. Like I told you so. Um, like for all the people who are skeptics. So it says here, um, digital identity has an evolving scope. Processes that determine if an authenticator is used, fingerprints and passwords to claim the identity are valid. Sometimes digital identity goes beyond authentication. 
Authentication is a security process that compares attributes to confirm a claim, right? Blah, blah, blah. Um, it says profile may include inherent data attributes as biometrics, eyes, hands, skin, um, uh, certain data. Like it's, it, it, I mean, it, it could be anything. Um, history, credit or medical history, online purchases and behaviors. Inferences, judgments or decisions made based on authentication processes. Um, here is, and I'm going to stop it here. It's going to say, um, individuals can already be decentralized identity solutions. For example, personal data servers to import their personal data and on-device data storage for banking and healthcare, right? So you're, now you become a, a storage of data where you have healthcare and banking and social platforms and, and your, your taxes and your IDs and your health cards and your credit card. And they're just all sitting here. You are the device that somebody would access. So if you put something in there, it's also hackable. It's also uh, where you can do a man in the middle attack where it's communicating with something. This thing just can't, doesn't do anything. Like somebody that has to bring a device to it to pick up off of it or it's sending out a signal and somebody's picking that up and that's how they're performing data. Well, guess what? When they put certain um, towers in place uh, that are, uh, their radio frequencies are really far. They start with a five gomer, five gomers five golfers. Um, and so, uh, yeah, it says here, um, from banking and healthcare information and social media data, use them directly for identi identity authentication, data access authorization, apps, websites, technology can empower users to take control of their personal information. And then here is, here it is. It says here, um, the now is consent. First, we need consent. Traditional intermediaries and user content, web browsers, apps, mobiles, and devices. The evolution is to sit, shift control to the user, personal data stores on device data storages and more advanced data intermediaries, smart devices, agents. But the future agency, next level of data intermediaries embedded in body, devices, homes, and cities. And what that looks like is a funda fundamental level of ID proofing and verified attributes remains. Focus shifts from verified attributes and credentials to the actual person, fluid boundaries between data stores and agents, um, evolving to the definition of control and agency, and I'm sure it even goes further on. The reason why I wanted to talk about this, and thanks for sticking this long, is because you will become the device, and it makes sense. Remember I made that thing called the, um, um, uh, the, the smart mark? And the smart mark went on people and they were like, yeah, we got the smart mark. And then there were some towers and people were controlling them. They were just, you know, you know, dee -dee 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 -dee. and it was just like, and these towers ended up sending these radio frequencies and people would stop. And they were just like, have to go get the freedom fighters. You know, they were like, they just stopped. And they're like, I got to find the freedom fighters. And the freedom fighters were the ones who were going against this evil organization. And it was a whole city. Well, this remember I've made I've made things about a hive mind or people being controlled, and it's it's clear as day that this is a possibility. It's clear as day because it's biblical that people can be inhabited by demons. It's clear as day that if a society's mind is so warped that they are it's almost like they're controlled or under a spell. I talk about it all the time that they would accept the mark of the beast. That there would be some piece of technology, that's something that could that could they could be a a tower. Right, a little mini tower, a little mini agent, a little mini broadcaster, right, a router of sorts, um, connecting to a server, connecting to something, and it's sending information, and it's just like, hey, hey, and then it's like, you know what, just put some code in, and there you go, and it's like, I've, I've now hijacked, or I have control over this user. It sounds, sounds like something out of a movie. I say it all the time, so it's not anything new here. So if you're, if you're new to the channel and you're like, you're out of your mind. It sounds completely sci-fi. I get it. But the Bible is true. And this is really happening. And this is what looks like it's going to happen. And human agency becoming one with machine. Becoming, and it literally, you saw me say, you saw me read it. It said, and still trying to remain as human as possible. But do you know the boundaries are already <laughs> so far beyond that? They're not trying to do that. They're literally trying to corrupt the image of God and literally bring people to this point where they can't even think for themselves, they're robots. And it's like, now you can't get saved, right? Because you can't even think for yourself. It's like, oh, now you've, now you've taken the mark of the beast. And it's just like, and producing these things and demon filled people, and it's just like, they're rejecting it, they're rejecting it. And uh, they do it to themselves. 
So anyways, guys, that's the video. Thanks for sticking me for 20 minutes here. This is an important topic. Um, and uh, what is it? Um, I'd love to hear what you guys think. I'll put the link for all, all, both of these things in the description box below. So let me know what y'all think, and I'll see you in the next one.